And joining me now is Gail Walensky, a former Medicare director dur during the George H.W. Bush administration. She's also a board member of United Health Group. And Anish Chopra, former chief technology officer for the Obama White House. Uh, welcome to both of you. Anish, I want to start with you. Uh, the Obama campaign and the Obama administration, so well known uh, for being on the cutting edge of technology, your job did not exist at the White House before you had it, and yet the biggest rollout of something that requires expertise when it comes to the web, mm -hmm. and uh, it is not going well, to say the least. Uh, why didn't he use people like you, people like the people who ran uh, his data mining and internet during the campaign, and, and what exactly is going wrong? Well, let me begin. I'm very confident there's a great group of people working this issue right now. Uh, look, the nature of the problem... I'm not, by the way. Well, that's keep, fair. Keep fair going. Uh, look, the nature of the problem is relatively uh, well-defined. Uh, they expected about 60,000 people to sign up for an account at roughly the exact same time. That's a lot of people. They ended up getting about 250,000 people signing up for an account at the exact same time. That significant increase essentially overwhelmed the system, leading to the glitches. The good news is uh, we're not inventing a new form of physics. We're simply addressing the problem that's been identified. They're looking to way, uh, find ways to expand that capacity at that account creation step. It will be resolved over the next several weeks. I'm very confident of that. And hopefully this will be a footnote in the challenges when we look back on the enrollment process. And Gail, this problem is not limited to the federal exchanges. Some states have set up their own Obamacare uh, websites and people have had trouble uh, logging on. Uh, what do you think is going on? Well, I want to make a slight addendum uh, to what Anish just said. Uh, there clearly was a volume issue. Uh, it would be great if that were the only problem uh, that's been uncovered, at least according to a lot of other uh, IT, independent IT experts, uh, it's been software issues in, a different, in addition to not knowing what the volume uh, was going to be. There is also a policy decision the administration made early on that has uh, incredibly increased the burden on the system. Normally, if you want to go online and buy something, uh, you can browse anonymously, decide whether or not you're interested and then go through the process of providing personal information. The administration made the decision that they didn't want people to look at options unless they also had the subsidy that they would receive available to them. They were afraid of sticker shock. Let's get Anish to respond uh, to that. Maybe a friendly amendment back to Gail. So let me make this very clear. At the same time the administration launched healthcare.gov within a day, they had a website called data.healthcare.gov that would allow anyone in the private sector, a media organization, a nonprofit, to take the raw file of every plan and every price and present it to the American people as open information. There was nothing about that was meant to be hidden, so that information was made available. Now, the government itself on healthcare.gov obviously primarily was about making sure that the right person was given the right information. And I will also say, yeah. as soon as this criticism had come out, it didn't even take a day or two. You can today anonymously shop on healthcare.gov, kind of reflecting this nimble response. You know, the administration is refusing to give the numbers uh, of how many people have signed up, how many people are enrolled. Um, originally, they said they didn't have the data. Now they seem to have the data. They just don't want to share it until uh, the middle of November. That seems to suggest that very few people are enrolling and they're waiting for the number to increase. Well, look, the, the commitment was there on transparency. A lot of information is available at data.healthcare.gov, and you're going to see the numbers every month as had been committed. But take a look at the Washington Post yesterday did a study looking at the, uh, some of these Nielsen-like services on the Internet. Based on what was reported in the Post, over one million accounts have been created. Now, just to put that in perspective, Seven million people were anticipated to buy health insurance through the exchanges. Mm -hmm. And if a million on the federal site have already set up the account, that's a pretty big number yeah, in just we, the first week or two. We don't know that yet, though. We don't know that. Not officially, the, but that, that had been reported, yeah. Uh, Gail, uh, some Republicans, including uh, Senator Pat Roberts of Kansas, who uh, has had a somewhat friendly relationship with uh, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, uh, Kathleen Sebelius, who's a former governor from that state, uh, are now calling for her resignation because of the failure of this website. 
uh, to perform up to, I think, everybody's expectations, including President Obama's. Do you think that she should resign? I think it's premature to have a decision of that nature. Uh, if it turns out it is harder and longer to fix the technical issues that have plagued the federal exchange than now is clear, uh, it, it'd be comparable in the private sector to having a very major botched roll-up uh, of the most important activity uh, an entity is undertaking. Uh, if not uh, resigning uh, some uh, serious uh, reduction in uh, stature and status would normally accompany uh, that kind of a botched roll-up. All right, Gail Walensky and East Chopra, thank you so much.